Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing the content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so today, I, a cigarette smoker, am going to be reacting to some vintage, retro, 1970s cigarette commercials, you know what I'm saying? Which, honestly, I am very, very excited to react to because, well... Cigarette commercials on live TV were actually banned in the United States in 1971. So a lot of the commercials we're going to be watching today are either from A, 1970, or they're going to be B, from, well, Europe and stuff like that kind of thing. Because they were not banned in Europe until just a little bit later kind of thing. So there's still 1970s vintage cigarette commercials and stuff like that kind of thing from Europe and stuff like that. But none really from the United States. So a lot of the cigarette ads we're going to be watching today are, well, from 1970 and just the first part of 1971. You know what I'm saying? Literally January 1st, 1971 at midnight is when cigarette ads were banned on live TV and radio in the United States, you know what I'm saying? So as such, first off, we're gonna be watching a little bit of a video covering that sort of stuff from the time and everything like that. A little bit of a remembrance of it, a little bit of a, uh, what's the right word? A little bit of an epilogue, I wanna say, for cigarette ads and stuff like that kind of thing from literally like 30 minutes before the, the ban actually went through and everything like that kind of thing. And the last cigarette ad that was ever shown on live TV in the United States kind of thing was actually on January 1st, 1971, 10 minutes to night, midnight at 11.50 p.m. It's crazy, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely crazy. But today, I'm going to be smoking a little bit of a Timeless Time Blue Light Cigarette, you know what I'm saying? And I do think without further ado, it is time for me to go ahead and get this lit up. And then after that, it's time for us to go ahead and start reacting to, well, some vintage cigarette ads from the 1970s, you know what I'm saying? I do think without further ado, let's go ahead and get this lit up. And let's go ahead and start watching some of those ads. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Alrighty, so, oh man, I had to burp real quick, you know what I'm saying, I had to burp real quick. So, I do think without further ado, let's go ahead and watch the first cigarette that I've lined up, the first cigarette, the first cigarette that I've lined up, the first video that I have lined up for us today, which is titled, January 1st, 1971, The Last Cigarette Ads Appear on TV, ABC News. So this is ABC's news, a little bit of an epilogue for cigarette ads and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? This was uploaded by Shatner Method, and I do appreciate them uploading this video. It's such an interesting video to me, and I have watched a little bit of it kind of thing, but I have not watched the whole thing, so I do think without further ado, let's go ahead and click on this video, and let's go ahead and start watching, well, the first video that we're going to be watching today. Yes, sir, yes, sir, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. The Philip Morris Company has bought all commercial time on the first half hour of all the network talk shows tonight. That is the last half hour on which it is legal to sell cigarettes on radio or television in the United States. It marks, as we like to say, the end of an era. It's been a long era. I guess maybe really sophisticated advertising for cigarettes began when George Washington Hill wanted to start women on the habit, but was afraid of popular criticism. In those days, it was assumed that women were somehow finer creatures than men. Anyhow, Hill put a man and a girl in a porch swing, the man smoking a lucky strike. The girl speaks, blow some my way. I love the smell of a good cigarette. In later years, horses and waterfalls and speedboats and almost everything else have been used instead of porch swings as a setting for the message. In wrestling around for a nostalgic piece, producer Dick Goldberg ran into Philip Morris's original Johnny, somewhat older now, as we all are. So, I'm just going to go and pause it real quick because I really, really like what they did with this kind of thing. He literally acknowledged it's the end of an era, and it really was the end of an era for United States TV, cigarette advertising, broadcasting, and stuff like that kind of thing, on live TV and everything like that kind of thing. It really was the end of an era, I get to play on I'm really, really glad that ABC News acknowledged that kind of thing and was like, wow, this is an end of an era kind of thing. And now what we're going to be watching, since he's covered that, he's covered, he covered the first iconic like cigarette ad kind of thing, which honestly I had never heard before while well, watching this video and everything like that. I had never heard of it before watching this video. I'm definitely going to have to try to find that for a future video, that is for sure. But it, it's just one of those things where I'm just kind of looking at it. And I'm just kind of like, wow, this really was an end of an era, not just in my opinion, but also in the people during the Times opinion as well kind of thing. And that's just crazy again, plan stuff. That just really is crazy. Let's just go ahead and pause it back though. From what I remember, at least, they just show a, a little bit of a compilation of some of the most iconic ads shown in the, well, before the 1970s, they're gonna play on stuff. So these are gonna be some 1960s ads and stuff like that kind of thing. But hopefully y'all don't mind, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go and pause it back though and go ahead and let y'all watch some of those ads, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying?
Light up for lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. And I gotta admit, one of the things that's super iconic about 1970s, about 1970s, about 1960s cigarette commercials, in my personal opinion, is that they all have a jingle kind of thing. Every single one of them has a jingle. And that's gonna be something you guys are gonna be noticing with these commercials, is that pretty much all of these have jingles I gotta play on us, y'all. Over, under, around, and through. Pell mell travels Pell -mell. to you. Pell -mell. What's it like? to smoke an alpine. Hi, I'm Lee Marvin, just brushing up on my judo and just, enjoying my favorite smoke. He just bodies somebody and then he's like, yeah, all right, this is my cigarette kind of thing. That's just absolutely hilarious, you know what I'm saying? Just absolutely bodies somebody and then just, oh, this is my cigarette I'm smoking while I'm bodying people. That's just absolutely hilarious, you know what I'm saying? I still can't believe that. They called it Pal Mal. It's Paul Mall. Say it, say it, say it with me, y'all. Paul Mall, I gotta blame. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. They are doing me dirty, trying to tell me that I'm saying it wrong. It's Paul Mall. It's not Pal Mall. I do not care. It's Paul Mall, you know what I'm saying? Paul I'm saying. Pal Mall. Harrington smokers no. would rather fight Glenn Switch. Harrington don't exist no more, I think. Oh. <laughs> Y'all see this? Y'all see this? These are comically large cigarettes. Comically large cigarettes. I need me some of those. I need me some comically large cigarettes. I gotta play honest, y'all. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna need one of these from this ad, and I need to put it in my house or something like that kind of thing. I need me a comically large cigarette, you know what I'm saying? That would be absolutely hilarious. So fresh. Fresh. No you can light either hand. My Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Here's a story about a cigarette that's sure to please. Keeps you smoking fresh and friendly as a southern breeze. The hint of mint and Newport refreshes while you smoke. Newport. Refreshes, refreshes, refreshes while you smoke. Are there any questions, man? Here on the ranch, this cigarette is the one. Gentle, rich-tasting camels. Simple as that. Marlboro. Sure is a swell new box. Ripton tastes good like a cigarette. A little bit behind on that. Wherever you are, you're in Marlboro country. Sirens screaming danger in the street. Foul cars racing trouble on the beat. Guarding giant cities, you will find a man. Stops and takes big pleasure when and where he can. Virginia Slims. It's Virginia Slims. Well, it isn't like saying goodbye to an old friend, I guess, because the doctors have convinced us they aren't old friends. But we may be pardoned, I think, on dim That's winter nights in the future, sitting by the fire and nodding and saying, remember LSMFT? Remember Glenn Gray playing smoke rings for the camel caravan? Remember nature in the raw is seldom mild? Remember all those girls who had it all together? Howard will be back with comment in a moment. Settle down? Not a chance. Not when you're on the road with the Partridge family. Oh, I think this is just an ad. I think this is just an ad for a TV show kind of thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip the actual advertisements we're going to be watching today. But that was just such an interesting little bit of a video in my personal opinion. Not only because he acknowledges it's like an end of an era kind of thing. It really was in the, the end of an era at that time kind of thing. And I'm so glad that people at that time acknowledged that it was the end of an era kind of thing. And it's one of those things that... It really is just, it's the end of an era kind of thing. 1971, that was the end of cigarette advertising on United States broadcast television, I gotta be honest, y'all. So it's one of those things that it really was an end of an era. I'm glad he acknowledged it kind of thing. And I find it so funny. He was like, man, 
I, you know, I know in a couple years kind of thing, we're just going to be sitting by the fire kind of thing. Just like, man, where, where, where'd LSMFT go? And then all the other ones, I don't know. LSMFT, of course, is still something, is still a little bit of a spiel that's used today, I gotta play honest, yeah, which is very, very interesting, I gotta play honest, but it definitely did lose a little bit of significance with, well, the banning of advertising on TV, I gotta play honest, yeah. But I do think without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip to the next video so we can go ahead and watch some actual cigarette advertisements instead of watching an ad for the Partridge family, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? So this is a, I actually don't know. Waking up on Sunday morning. morning Take your time, let the day unwind Find an easy mind Sounds fire. Waking up on Sunday morning Take your time, let the day unwind Find an easy mind I think one thing that this advertisement does really, really well is it really puts the people in a setting where you can imagine yourself kind of thing. This is something that, of course, Marlboro did and everything like that kind of thing with being like, hey, look, okay, we're gonna make, if we're gonna make everybody who smokes Marlboro feel like a cowboy kind of thing. This cigarette, I would definitely have to say, they've taken a little bit of a different approach. You just wanna chill out, you just wanna relax kind of thing. Smoke one of these, I gotta play this. I'm not sure what, I think it's the major cigarettes. I'm not exactly sure, I've never heard of those before. I don't even know if they're sold anymore, I gotta play honest y'all. But it's still one of those things where I feel like this advertisement does a really good job of just making you, whenever you're smoking one of those kind of thing, you're just gonna feel chill, you're just gonna feel relaxed kind of thing. And it's just one of those things where this makes you be able to visualize yourself smoking when you're while well, painting or when you're on the beach kind of thing or when you're just hanging out with friends that are gonna play on yourself. It does a really good job of visualizing the way that it wants its consumers to imagine themselves smoking the cigarettes kind of thing. I feel like they do a really good job with that. Let's go and pause back. Major extra size. This is, I don't know. It's, it's Periscope in-depth stock footage. That's what it is. If you could put Terryton's charcoal filter on your cigarette, if you could put Terryton's charcoal filter on your cigarette, you'd have a better tasting cigarette. Of course, we can't guarantee it'd smoke as smooth as a Terryton. Face it, if you yeah, want your work. cigarette I know to that smoke from, as from, smooth from as a Terryton, it'll just have to be a Terryton with the activated charcoal filter. That's why us Terryton smokers would rather fight. I, I find this really funny though, and I, after I talk a little bit about this, I'm gonna go and get another cigarette lit up, you know what I'm saying, because I just finished off my cigarette a couple minutes ago, you know what I'm saying? But what I find really funny is that they're using charcoal filters as a selling point for the cigarettes back in the 70s kind of thing, for Terry Tins back in the 70s. Charcoal filters are still used as an advertisement today. American Spirit recently did that. Uh, I want to say some Dunhills is sold in the United States also have charcoal filters. And American Spirit, it was not really an advertisement per se, but it definitely was a selling point that was made clear on posters and stuff like that kind of thing. Look, it has a charcoal filter and everything like that kind of thing. It was still used as a selling point today, and they were using it in the 70s. That's crazy, gotta play inside. That is absolutely crazy. Just absolutely insane that charcoal filters are still something that is being used as an advertising gimmick. I do think without further ado though, it is time for me to go ahead and get another cigarette all lit up so we can go and watch some more cigarette ads. Yes sir, yes sir, you know what I'm saying, I'm saying. Then switch. Thank you very much for Periscope Film for this uh, footage I gotta put on a show. In this modern world, so this one's in the UK, obviously. Something very special happens. Got a Rolls Royce. The brilliance of diamonds by Garrard, a limousine by Park Ward, the delicacy of porcelain by Meissner. And now, my man looking like James Bond over here. John Player Special. Created yeah, John Player! To be the world's finest achievement in Virginia cigarettes. A shade longer. Many shades more desirable than any other cigarette you've experienced. That is some James Bond stuff right there. The jet black patch. So something yes, very special still happens in this modern world. Now they're watching the advertisement itself. 
That's really good. I got a player set. That's really good. The, once again, as with the, what was it, the major extra size or something like that kind of thing, as with those, this does a really good job of making the viewer imagine themselves, oh, if I'm going to be smoking a John Player special kind of thing, it's a luxury cigarette. Even if I'm not rich kind of thing, I can feel like I'm rich kind of thing. They're selling it as a luxury item. Like they mentioned, like they have a Rolls Royce in there kind of thing. They have diamonds. They, they literally compare John Player Special to like diamonds and stuff like that kind of thing, to a Rolls Royce and stuff like that kind of thing, which I just find so funny. So it's one of those things where if you aspire to that lifestyle, what are you going to smoke? John Player Special, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let's go and pause back. I'm though. an actress. Performing in the theater means a lot to me. This is a big part, and it wasn't easy to get. I could have had a lot of other parts if I was willing to go along with those fads that sweep the theater nudity or whatever but that would have been a cop-out for me nudity i feel the same way about smoking that's why i smoke vantage i tried a lot of brands that talk about their tar and nicotine numbers they promised a lot of flavor but for me they copped out Vala. and i wouldn't trade real flavor for anything I'm gonna bring now i don't have to vantage doesn't cop out on flavor and it's got 11 milligrams of tar and 0.9 milligrams of nicotine. They say it's because of a special tobacco blend and some new filter. All I know is, I waited for what I wanted, and I got it. Introducing Vantage, the cigarette that doesn't cop out on flavor. So 11 milligrams of tar and 0.9 milligrams of nicotine. So what is that? That's basically a light cigarette. Well, with the tar, there's definitely a full flavored kind of thing. But that's, with the nicotine levels, there's definitely a light cigarette I could play on sale. So, Oh my goodness, though, that is a pretty good advertisement as well. I got to play myself. That is a pretty good advertisement as well. I am legitimately impressed by that. It's, it, it says what you need to know kind of thing. It's like, man, I tried so many other brands, but you know, Vantage was the only one that really spoke to me, I got to be honest, y'all, and the only one that gave this lady some money. But, but it's, it's still one of those things where that's a good advertisement. It tells you everything you might want to know about Vantage cigarettes, and it tells you their market segmentation right there. Vantage's market segmentation sort of way they did things back then, I guess, because, of course, Vantage is a very, very small brand these days. You really do not see a lot of Vantage cigarettes these days. I've only ever found the lights and the ultralights, and I definitely got to pick those up to do a review in the future, that is for sure. But it's one of those things that that is their market segmentation kind of thing. That's their market segmentation right there. And it's one of those things that they just stated the market segmentation right there. We weren't able to find anything we really liked. So I found Vantage kind of thing. I found Vantage and it was what I liked kind of thing. And that is definitely something that if that's the cigarette I was looking for, if I was looking for a low, low tar, low tar, 11 milligrams of tar, it's not very low compared to some other cigarettes I could play on. So, but if I was looking for a, a low nicotine, low tar cigarette at the time kind of thing, I'd be like, ah, oh, maybe I got to try Vantage or something like that. I could play on some, maybe I got to try. I'm going to go and pause it back though. Some people can't resist our garden center. So come and take a few things home yourself. Baxter and Geffen Garden Center has everything. Oh, your we're watching garden center ads? Don't grow without us. I didn't realize we were watching garden center ads. What? What? Classic Benson and Hedges cigarettes, TV ads, 1970. Well, we just watched garden ad. Ah, there's Benson and Hedges. That's what I'm saying. Yes, sir. <laughs> he just got done dirty he just got done dirty this is another thing where it's just like hey if this is the lifestyle you want kind of thing smoke benson and hedges i gotta play on yourself and i will i do find this amusing i want to say that this is a uk classic benson and hedges to cigarette ads 1970 i'm not sure if this is a uk ad or a american ad i'm not sure exactly but because they didn't talk. I, I have no clue kind of thing if this is a U.S. ad or, 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 well, an American ad kind of thing. But it's still one of those things where 
this this cigarette packaging looks very very similar to what Benson and Hedges look like these days. So I gotta admit, respect. You know what I'm saying? Respect. I didn't realize they hadn't changed the cigarette packaging in a fat minute. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. Let's go and pause back though. <laughs> Are we about to watch another advertisement that's not for Benson and Hedges? A James Bond theme going or something like that. So this is UK, okay. Boats have been putting out of British harbors for metal okay, I'm pretty sure this is just an ad for something else. All right, I'm gonna go and skip it to the next one. Yes, sir, Marlboro. Oh, wait. Oh, this is a Canadian Marlboro ad. This is not, yeah, Canadian market advertisement. Because Marlboro actually sold off the nameplate Marlboro in the Canadian market kind of thing in the 1930s and tried to obtain it over a couple years. I got to play this. It never worked out. They never were able to sell Marlboro in the, the, off of the nameplate Marlboro in Canada ever again. And instead they were sold as rooftop cigarettes, I want to say, with the same sort of packaging and everything like that kind of thing. But it's one of those things where I find this so funny because Marlboro in Canada used the exact same advertising. Like it's still an iconic, there's a bug on my screen, get that bug off. It's still the iconic Marlboro ad, except it's not the same company. It's not Philip Morris. It's a complete, it's the, it's the Canadian company that made Marlboro, not Marlboro, I got a blanket, which is just so funny. And the packaging looks completely different, you know what I'm saying? I just find it so funny that they're literally using the exact same advertisement as they used in the United States, a completely different company. But this is in Canada kind of thing. I find this so funny, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely hilarious. This is, it's it's like, this is Marlboro made by a completely different company and yet they're using the exact same advertising tactics. So funny in my personal opinion and definitely is one of those things that, that's just hella funny to me. That's just hella funny to me. I'm gonna go and pause back now. Great Canadian tobacco. Great, Great Canadian, Canadian tobacco. tobacco. There we go, it's Canada. Try one. There you go, what's this? Stuck in the desert? Oh. Hey, it's a camel ad, that's what I'm saying. I'd walk a mile for a camel. This little demonstration was strictly for smokers who never tasted a camel cigarette. Camel smokers, you know what we mean. You other guys, start walking. I walk, I'm like, what, what, I'm like, it's kind of like the, like, what would you do for a Klondike? I'd die for a Klondike kind of thing. I'd walk a mile for a camel. That is pretty good. I get a place. That is pretty good. And one thing I'm noticing with a lot of these ads, since they're in the 1970s, the style has changed just a little bit from the 1960s ads and the 1950s ads. A lot of the 1950s ads and a lot of the 1960s ads had a jingle or something like that. I get a place. They had a jingle or something like that. These might still have jingles, but they are most obviously far more sort of like lifestyle ads than they were well 
jingle type, hey, here's what you get kind of thing. They're more lifestyle ads than, well, just jingles and stuff like that I got to play on. So, which is very interesting. I'm saying I definitely do think jingles are still a good way to advertise. That is for sure. Definitely just get that jingle. L-S-M-F-T. Get that jingle stuck in your head. I got to play on y'all. It's one of those things that I find that pretty amusing. You know what I'm saying? I find that pretty amusing. And honestly, the change in the stylization of cigarette ads is something that is very interesting as well. Changing from more of a, well, as I said, a jingle to more of a lifestyle ad. And of course, Marlboro was the one who pushed that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I do think without further ado, let's go ahead and pause it back. Pizza. See you later. Take care of that leg, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Give it up, you guys. Well, I guess it's just you and me, buddy. Just getting that, getting those angles. Yeah, me and my Winston, me and my Winston, we got a real good thing. When it comes to keeping a guy good company, there's almost nothing like a Winston. One taste. And it'll be you and your Winstons. Almost nothing like a Winston. Of course, the ad has to have a pretty girl in it kind of thing. That's just how advertising is, you know what I'm saying? And they did the exact same thing with this Winston yeah. ad. Winston King or Super King, you got a real good thing. Super King or just 100s. Let's be honest here. It's nice talking to you again, Carl. Same here. How about dinner sometime real soon? How about right now? What are they, FaceTime? Hey, you're on. I'll pick you right up. <laughs> hey, how would you like to have a phone like They're that? They're FaceTiming in the room right, next door kind of thing? That's, <laughs> hey, that's pretty realistic. People be doing that today. Hey, what's going on, my man? I'm in the next room kind of thing. That's pretty realistic, I'm going to be honest. That's pretty a realistic. A quick cigarette? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes they just don't taste so good. Here, have a Viceroy. Oh, another vice warrior. Don't settle for a summer of intense, summer of intense. Completely different packaging from what you see today, though. Gives you all the taste, all the time. Are these vice warriors always as good? All the time. Don't settle for a summer of intense, summer of time. This one definitely has a drink. Vice warrior gives you all the taste, all the time. I predicted that, I predicted that, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I predicted that. King size or extra long. Yes, sir. And I want to say, yeah, that was all of I, that's, that's all of the advertisements I had, you know what I'm saying, that is all of the advertisements I had. I'm just going to go and end my little bit of a screen recording right now, you know what I'm saying, and just go ahead and speak a little bit about my opinions on these ads and everything like that, and go ahead and finish off the cigarette real quick before I do that, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. But I think it's really interesting to see the stylization difference between the 1960s and the 1970s kind of thing. And to see a lot of these were literally just from 1970 kind of thing. But we can still see the stylization kind of thing. We can still see the impact that Marlboro made on, well, advertising and everything like that kind of thing. Basically, everybody just started copying Marlboro. Literally, Marlboro in Canada, fine Canadian tobacco kind of thing, is not made by Philip Morris. It's not made by Philip Morris. made by a completely different company. And they literally use the exact same advertising. If that is not a, uh, if that is, if that is not a sign that everybody was copying Marlboro at that time, then I don't know what is. You know, what I'm saying that I don't know what is. But I just find it so funny. And the stylization difference is really, really interesting to me. And I'm, I'm really glad to have uh, watched some of the advertisements from the 1970s and seen the end of an era. I don't know if I'm going to be doing any 1980s ads or anything like that kind of thing. I'm going to have to look, see if I can find any. But if I do find any, that video will be coming up in the future, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? But overall, certainly no complaints for me. Seeing the stylization difference was really, really interesting. And watching that first video was super impactful in my personal opinion. It really just set in, set in stone kind of thing that that really was the end of an era. Not only in my personal opinion, but also in people's opinion at that time. And him just saying how, man, we're going to be sitting by the fire and everything like that kind of thing. We're going to be sitting by the fire in a couple years and wondering where LSMFT and all those other ones went and everything like that kind of thing. I just find that so funny. And it really is just one of those things that, wow, that really is the end of an era. But I think the most interesting thing for me was not only that, just realizing that, wow, it really was the end of an era kind of thing. 1971, January 1st, 1971 at midnight kind of thing. So I guess the first minute of January 2nd, 1971, I do suppose was the actual time I got to play on sale. But it's still one of those things that, 
is just so interesting, you know what I'm saying? It's just so interesting seeing the end of an era and seeing the stylization difference all the way up until the end and watching some international cigarette ads as well were very, very interesting that uh, I want to say it was the, I can't remember what it was, what the first one we watched besides the first video I got to play on sale, but that Benson and Hedges ad was really, really good as well and I really, really did enjoy that, you know what I'm saying? But I think that's pretty much my reaction to 1970s vintage retro cigarette commercials, you know what I'm saying? I certainly do hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video and if you guys have enjoyed watching this video, if you guys have have enjoyed watching me react to some 1970s, 19, well, to some 1970s vintage retro cigarette ads, commercials, whatever you want to call them kind of thing. Of course, please make sure to like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my P.O. box, my second channel, all in the description down below. You know what I'm saying? Go check it all out. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, y'all. Until the next one, stay safe and peace and have a great one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying?